Welcome to this lesson on transformations. In this video, I'm going to be going over an introduction to transformations as well as translations. So let's go over some vocabulary first. A transformation is the process of changing a figure. A pre-image is the original figure before you have completed any transformations on the figure. So it's the figure that you start with in a problem. And then the image is the new figure after a transformation. And the image will use something called a prime symbol. And it's basically a little um, apostrophe after each point. All right, so let's go over the four types of transformations. And remember, if at any time I'm going too fast, you can pause the video and catch up on your notes. Okay, so there are four types of transformations. The first one is a translation, or another word for that is a slide. And this would be my pre-image. This would be my image because it has the prime symbols here. And a translation will just slide a shape across the graph. It's not going to change the direction or the way it's facing. It's going to be facing the exact same way with the points in the same spot. It will just be in a different location on the graph. A translation will always keep the shape congruent. So same shape and same size. It is one of the rigid transformations, which just means it keeps the shape congruent. And another word for rigid transformations are isometries. So all three of these words basically mean the same thing. It keeps the shape the same shape and the same size. All right, the next one is a reflection or a flip. And it will also keep the shape congruent. And just like a translation, it is rigid. It is an isometry. And when you have a reflection, you're always going to have a line of reflection. So in this case, my line of reflection would be the x-axis. So it was just flipped across the x-axis. The next type is a rotation or a spin or turn. And it will also keep the shape congruent, which means it is a rigid transformation. It is an isometry. It doesn't change the size of the shape. It just changes where it is. So this one has rotated down here. And we will get into rotations soon, but this is a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. All right, and then the last type is a dilation, and that is going to either reduce, which means to make smaller, or enlarge to make bigger the shape. So in this case, I have enlarged it, so this is my original, and then here is my image. So the green is my pre-image, and then the pink is my image, and I have enlarged this triangle. So a dilation is different because it no longer keeps a shape congruent. However, it does keep it similar, but not congruent. So similar means it's the same shape, so I'm not going from a triangle to a quadrilateral, but it will not keep it the same size since I am enlarging it or reducing it. So because it does not keep the shape congruent, this is not a rigid transformation, and it is not an isometry. Okay, so pause the video now, and you can complete this practice, and then check it with your teacher. Okay, once you have checked that practice, we can go ahead and move on to translations. So a translation will move a shape either right, left, up, 
down, or a combination of those directions. When a figure has been translated, it will still be facing the same direction. Okay, so let's go over the coordinate rules for translations. So when you move a shape to the left, you're going to be subtracting from the X coordinate. So for example, if I want to go left two units, I would subtract two from the X value. If I want to go to the right, then I would add to the X value. So by the way, when you have a coordinate rule, this part will always remain the same. That just means this is my pre-image. That's what I'm starting with. The arrow tells you that you are going to be transforming it in some way. And then this part tells you how to transform it. So that is a coordinate rule. That's the notation that you write it in. Okay, for up and down, we are going to be adding and subtracting from the Y value, which makes sense. Think about the Y axis is vertical up and down. So if I'm going up, I'm going to be adding to the Y coordinate. So if I want to go up one, I would write Y plus one. And then to go down, I'm subtracting from the Y coordinate. So if I want to move down 5, I would write Y minus 5. Okay, so let's try to write out some coordinate rules. So number one, write the rule for the following translations. So translate left 2 and up 1. So anytime you write a coordinate rule, you always start out X comma Y arrow. So that means this is the point that I'm starting with, and then we will write what we want to do to that point. So for left 2, I'm going to subtract 2 from my x coordinate. And then for up 1, I'm going to add 1 to my y coordinate. All right, for the next one, translate right 5 and down 7. So right 5 would be x plus 5, down 7 would be y minus 7. Alright, now we're going to go backwards and we're going to go from the coordinate rule back to words. So number 1, I have x minus 3 and then y plus 7. We know this is a translation, so we're going to write translate. So x minus 3. That would mean to go left 3, y plus 7, that would mean to go up 7. Pause the video now and try number 2 by yourselves. Okay, so you should have gotten translate right 1, that would be for this, and then down 3. All right, let's look at some graphs for translations. The first example says, describe the translation using words and a coordinate rule. So this is my pre-image, and then this is my image. I know that because of the prime markings. So for this one, I have moved right one, two, three, four, five. So I have translated write 5. So that would be using words. And then now we want to write the coordinate rule. So x comma y arrow. Write 5 would be x plus 5. I didn't move up or down any so I just write y. In the next example it says to use the rule to graph the translation. Remember, this means to go right 3 and up 2. So let me zoom in here. So I'm going to pick a point. It doesn't matter which point you start with. And I'm going to count right 3 up 2. So I'm going to start with F. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So this would be F prime. I'm going to do the same thing for the other two. So for D, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2. So D prime is actually where the image, the pre-image for F was. And then for E, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. 
and then I'm going to connect these. Okay, and then for the last example, describe the translation using words and write a coordinate rule. So we need to make sure that we are starting with the pre-image, which is this one, and then counting to the image. So I'm going to just pick a point and I'm going to count from S to S prime. So left one, two, three, four, and then up two. So I translated left four, up two, and then the coordinate rule for that, x minus four, y plus two. All right, now you can stop the video and go ahead and complete translation practice, and you can check it with your teacher.